Yo, what it do, man? This is Grindfest and a the Therapist, man. I'm Demetrius. I'm Sunia. We've been together for 28 years, married for 23, 24, but who's counting? This is episode 24, and we're going to get on the topic of dreams. Now, so when I was a little kid, I wasn't really much of a big dreamer. Um, I guess I live life of what it is. It is, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I didn't dream for nothing big and expect nothing. I guess when you don't expect something, your feelings don't get hurt. You know what I'm saying? Sunil, was you a dreamer as a, as a kid? Yep. Yep. I used to walk in Kmart. <laughs> it was so funny because I would be in Kmart with probably my mom or my stepmom. And as they're shopping, I'm just walking around. And she said Kmart. Some of y'all don't know what Kmart <laughs> is. <laughs> Kmart. That was Walmart before it was Walmart. Um, and I would just visualize different things that I would be buying in the store. And my dad was big going, going to see like, um, mansions, estates, and we would go to different houses and I would be in the house and I'm visualizing, you know, the different things I want in my house and how I wanted my house to look. And so I've always saw myself ahead in the future or, you know, ahead of time. And you even would get irritated because I always I hated it. I was like, I don't want to go window shopping at houses and shit. No, I'm even talking about I always see the end result. Yeah. So I'm the type of person when I start something, I don't just see where I'm at. She jumps to the finish line. I'll yeah, be like, damn, can yeah, we work on yeah. plan B? She yeah. already at the finish line yeah. and she's celebrating. Like, yeah. hold on. So I'm, I'm mapping everything out and, and I see it before I, I get there. And so I'm experiencing it before I get there. And so that that's huge for me. I believe you have to see it before you you know, could even get it. Cause if you, if you don't see it, what are you working for? So I've always been like that. I always see myself in the future. I always see myself doing things that I'm doing now and some stuff I'm still waiting to do. And people will be like, they didn't get it. And I don't know, everybody's different, but my makeup is I'm, I'm just a dreamer, but I'm not a, a, just a dreamer. I'm an executor. A doer. And see that thing. Um, I'm an I, executor. Executor, excuse me. My thing is, is like, I guess it does make sense because if you don't envision yourself in, in something, you, I guess the ambition is not really there. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's a different type of dreamer. Some people will dream and don't put in the work. I feel like, if God give you a vision, because that's what it is, seeing yourself in a certain situation, seeing yourself with certain things, that's a vision, as some call it a dream. But you got to put the work in to make it happen. Sometimes I feel like it doesn't just fall in your lap. It can't just fall in your lap. Faith without works is dead. You got to put in the work. And that's what I'm saying. You I'm, say it can fall in your lap? It can't. Okay. Let's clarify it can't. that fall in your lap. And and that's why I'm big going executing, right? And that's why I have to see what I'm working towards. It's funny because my trainer, like I have a private trainer and when I work out, she'll be like, do a plank. And I'm like, okay, where we at? And so if she don't tell me where we at, I'm done. And I'll just fall. And she's like, why do you always do that? Um, you're the only person that needs a countdown. Because I need to know what I'm working towards. Because if I don't feel like I'm working towards something, then I just feel like I'm doing something to be doing, to be doing it. it. And so for me, timelines, um, visuals, everything means something to me because it makes me go harder. So if I'm doing a plank, she got me holding a plank for a minute, and I know, okay, I'm down to 50 seconds. I'm down to 40. I'm, now it's an incentive because I know I'm almost there. But you're just working, 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 and nothing is happening, and you don't know where you're at in the journey. It's frustrating. So for me to visualize the end goal is key for me to get there faster, more effectively, and smoother. Because it's like I know what I'm working towards. Yes, that makes total sense. But I'm going to switch the gears on the dreams because the dream we're going to talk about dreams of the mind of you actually going to sleep and having dreams. A lot of people used to say these is like pointless scenarios. Some say God is speaking you speaking to you through your dreams. And some of them is nightmares. You know what I'm saying? What do you take dreams? Because, you know, my, I'm bringing this up because my daughter had a whole class about them talking about dreams. So they had a dream analysis class? Yes. She didn't tell I, me about so that. What she was talking about that. And it was just, I forgot the key point she was making. But if they teaching this in, in the school. Yeah, this was I, her I, psychology we, class. Yeah, huh? It probably yeah. was dream analysis. So what's, what's, what's the purpose? Because she asked me, I was like, I don't even remember my dreams. 
You know, and that's crazy because sometimes we remember a dream and sometimes we just wake up totally, completely don't remember nothing. You know what I'm saying? Why is that? What do, what do you think about that? I think it depends on the person because I can actually control my dreams. Um, there's times where I'm controlling what I want to dream about. Um, there's times it's like, why am I dreaming about that? And then other times there's things that God is showing me. So it just depends. So you think like certain things you say you can control your dreams, like certain certain desires in your head is it's like you can you put yourself in, in it, You saying desires too erotically, like Well that and that's why I'm desires. saying this is <laughs> Let's this is some people with dream. Well, this is where the wet dreams come from. I because it's certain yeah. person having this desire and they make their self have these, these dreams and stuff. It's like, could you control that? Like, is it a certain part in your brain that's want to see this played out? And this is like a preview of what possibly could happen or a fantasy. I mean, if that's what you want to dream about, but dreams are just thoughts. So Typically, that's why I don't like the TV on when I go to sleep and I get irritated with you and tell you turn the TV off because if the TV's on, that whatever's making noise is now going in interpretation into my dreams. And so I think dreams are just thoughts. Yes, that's It's something that you're already thinking but, in your but mind. But you also say you also said, stated earlier that it's also God speaking to you. Yeah, so how can one separate your thoughts and God's words? Because you have to have a relationship with God. I know the difference when I'm just dreaming, and then I know the difference when, um, when it's God. It's 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 completely different. It's completely different. So when I'm just dreaming, you like okay, I know this is a dream, but when God is showing you stuff, it's like it's stuff that it's like I wouldn't think about, I wouldn't care about. You know what I mean? It's just it's. And then it seems real. Yeah. I to the point where you like, wake up wake and you up, like, pissed off, I, like I'm I about don't to, know about being mad. Yeah, I'm like, man, I'm about to slap the hell out of her ass. What? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You having no crazy ass dreams that seem so real and shit. What like, are you talking about? You wake up and look at the person next to you. You're like, you motherfucker. <laughs> man, you try it if you want to. Try oh, it if shit. you want to. Because I'm, I'm kind of confused where you went. But no. So um, I'm saying like when you're dreaming in this God, it's like it, it, it seems so real. Okay. I'll give you an example. I remember I had a dream. I was 16, you know, the story. And I had a dream that this man murdered my mom. And, uh, when I woke up, it was just so real. Like it just seemed, it, I knew it wasn't just a regular dream. And I was like, this is not like, this is, is feel felt real. Like yeah. I woke up crying. And so I called my dad. I'm like, hey, I just had this crazy dream about this man murdering my mom. And I was like giving him descriptive details. Um, he said, call her and tell her. So when I called my mom, I was like, mom, um, I seen this man with dreads. He murdered you. And she had just moved to Long Beach to this apartment. And I said, hey, you know, when you when you walk in your house, you go to the right. It's, it's the living room. Then you go to the right. It's a room. You go down. It's a room. And you keep going. It's, it's a bathroom. And she's like, wait a minute. So she was asking me like, oh, Cherie told you where I move. I'm like, no, I haven't talked to my sister. I said, this is what I saw in the dream. I said, when you go down, then you go this way. And it's like an alley in the hallway. And she just was like, I don't know if she thought I was like, my sister really told me what her apartments look like. But I had never been to her house. She had literally just had moved like two days before that into this apartment. I hadn't been there yet. And I was like, no, mom, I hadn't, I haven't been, she haven't, I haven't talked to my sister. She hasn't told me about your apartment complex. So we had a conversation. To be honest, I don't even know if my mom took me serious. I knew my dad did because he's more spiritual. Um, so not to say that she's not spiritual. I just don't know if she, she didn't, the vibe I got in the conversation was like, okay, I'm listening to you because of my daughter, but I couldn't really feel if. I was concerned. Yeah. So I didn't really know. So. Months had passed. I forgot about the dream. I wasn't even tripping off the dream. My mom, me and Demetrius, you know, we at my mom's house in Long Beach. She's dating this dude with dreads. Mind you, I forgot all about the dream. Months had passed. And then she's dating this guy. I'm not thinking anything of it. One day she comes in the house. Me and Demetrius is sitting in the living room. And she's like, hey, like he was sitting. The dude was um, outside in front of the apartment club. Uh, uh, outside across the street in front of the apartment complex next to the bus stop. And I never told him where I lived at and he was waiting on me. 
And then at that moment, I was like, mom, that's the guy. That's the guy that murdered you in my dream, the guy with the dreads. And so, and my mom had never dated somebody to my knowledge before with dreads. So it was just crazy. And so in that moment, when she said that I reminded her of the dream and I'm going to have to assume she took me serious because she like paused and stared at me. And then after that, he was no longer around. She never talked to him again. So, you know, I could give you story after story with stuff like that because God speaks to us in different ways, but dreams, um, he showed, well, he talks to me in many different ways, but so I know the difference when I'm just dreaming and when God is trying to show me something in a dream, um, it's just a total different feeling. Again, I feel like dreams many times are your thoughts. Cause I can control my dreams. I can go to sleep and dream about whatever I want to dream and then uh, dream about. And then there's times where it's like, okay, why am I even dreaming about that? But I know it's not God showing me something because I don't know. It's, it's just like a realness feeling to when God is showing you something in a dream, like, you know, like, okay, this is real. That's deep. That's real deep. I, I'll give you a coin on that one. You know what I'm saying? But why you need to ask, why are you giving the coin? That's it's, what I was about to ask. Yeah, like, but she just going to throw no, the coin out there. No, because I was thinking there, like, like <laughs> why, why are you even giving me a coin? But um, I never, I, I never why could... I could never control my dreams. I, it was like every time I go to sleep, it's just like a, a slot machine. I don't know what I'm going to get. You know what I'm saying? And then sometimes I only think lately I, I be having dreams. I don't know. It's just, it's it's weird. I, I, I probably have dreams, but I don't, they're not strong enough to remember. So um, that, that's crazy. But let's, let's go towards the relationship wise as your spouse or your mate, as you call it, your mate. Your mate? Yeah, because it's a difference when your spouse and mate, right? So a mate is somebody you're dating. A spouse oh, is somebody. I think it's you're used interchangeably. Well, however y'all want to use it. The reason why, because I mean, yeah, I don't think it's a difference. Uh, it, I mean, person, by definition, it can't be well, a difference. The person but when you're I use it, dating. it's not a difference. What do you mean? So your let's, significant other. Yeah, you know, your other person. So let's say y'all together, and the person you with is a dreamer. And, and it's like you don't want to crush their dreams, and, and you want to, you know what I'm saying? You want to be the supported spouse mate whatever y'all want to call it we're gonna call it spouse because that's what i am so supported spouse but you'd be like that's a far-fetched dream and you just be like man you need to wake your ass up you know what i'm saying it's like come back to reality how how can you keep a person from all the way in dreamland in, in into reality you know what i'm saying it's like a, i think that's a, that's subjective and i also think that if your dream doesn't scare you it's not big enough Cause there isn't a dream or a goal that I ever had that I knew how to accomplish it. I mean, it's great to scare you, but it can scare the person you with <laughs> off. You know what I'm saying? Because this is all then, this person then, is like. Then that's not the. You person talking about you... flying to the moon, and I ain't talking about by a spaceship. You talking about flying? You know what I'm saying? It's like but hold on, but, you... then, but then that's not the person you need to be with because any great idea sounds crazy. Because it, it the reason why it sounds crazy because it hasn't been done yet, and so many times people can't see what hasn't been done before yet so that's deep because all the great inventors yeah they, it's, they it's, all single what? einstein and all these great people I don't they know never if he had was a mate I, I don't know i i don't know they never talked about them i'm saying i think walt disney was married mm, to who let me see they don't talk about it. that's what i'm saying these great creators and stuff like that i don't think they had somebody on their side it's just like you you, you got to come to reality these bills need to be paid no, but that's the thing you got. And he did uh, Lillian Disney. He did have a wife. The thing about about dreams and goals, it should scare you. And it, and it should make sense to if your dream doesn't make sense to someone else. That's good, because that means it's something that has never been done or thought about. And so that's the thing about creating. Right. A lot of times people didn't get you didn't get what I was saying many times. And it's like you didn't get what I was saying, what I was doing. I mean, so it goes. I both got ways. it. But I think it, it, it comes to a part of balance. What do you mean? You can't go all in, especially if the person you with don't understand. So you got to kind of like tone it down and balance it out. I don't think it's a matter of understanding. I think it's a matter of under not understanding the dream or the goal. I think it's more of understanding your mate. Now, if you have a mate that's like, oh, every other month I'm doing this, doing this, doing this, and never, you know, execute. Then it's like, man, sit down. You say this all the time. Yes. You're you're never serious. But when you know your mate um, and you know that they're driven and when they like, 
you, myself, and our son is very much like this too. When our eye is set on the prize, there's nothing that's going to detour that. There's nothing that's going to come in the way, uh, in the way of that. It's like, we're going to keep grinding no matter how many times you fall off the bike. We're going to keep getting up and executing. And I think that makes the difference. When you see your mate is in their creative zone, it's like, don't discourage them or anybody for that matter. If you see somebody really trying to create, they may not hit the bullseye the first, first 50 10, times. 50, yeah. 100 times. But as long as they keep every time they miss it, trust me, they're going to get closer and closer to the mark because now they're like, okay, now. I got to lean to the left a little. I got to hold my breath, put one foot up. Like you're going to learn what it takes to hit the bullseye. Yeah, but when it starts sacrificing the house, because now we're mean? talking about funds. You know what I'm saying? Because every great idea takes money. So when you start taking away from the house, I think that could, because money is a big ass Why problem in, 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 a, in a marriage. You know what I'm saying? That could cause a number you one leading, so? one, number one leading thing in divorce is, is financial. So, when you start putting your money into your creative ideas and start losing, 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 it's like a gambler. It could become a strain on the marriage. Well, I think you need to be able to fund your ideas. I don't think you should. I don't think you should just take all your money and take it out of the household and put it into your ideas. I think you need to have probably another stream of income to fund that idea. I, I could see that, but then the spouse probably be like, well, you got this extra money. Why don't you just take me on an extra honeymoon? Well, look, then you know that's what I'm just not the person for you at the end of the day. I mean, we could have a million different uh, scenarios. At man. the end of the day, if you're not with somebody that's rocking with you and supporting you. A and teammate. See, yeah, so teammate. all this, then it, yes. you, they're probably not for you. Because yes. I couldn't imagine me trying to do everything I'm trying to do and you blocking me at every move. I would... It, I'm trying to work on, you know, my dream. I'm trying to be a mom, I'm trying to be this, 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 trying to be your wife. And it's like, you're sabotaging me at every move. It's like, then I, what is the point of being with you? You're not helping me do what I need to do. So basically you, you, you find that, that right person with you to help you nor, nourish your dreams, build nourish. your dreams. And I, and that's the key element. Find you a teammate, you know, not a coach. Not a referee. Sometimes you need a coach and a referee, though. You know what I'm saying? A teammate. a teammate. No, but the thing is, when people around you that love you, they're going to tell you the truth. I don't like no yes men around me. I love people that's going to tell me the truth um, because sometimes you need that. Sometimes you do need a coach. Sometimes you do need a referee. You need the coach to say, hey, babe, you know, lean a little to the left to hit the bullseye. That's a coach. You know, the referee, hey, let's call a timeout. You've been in the office for 10 hours straight. You need to... You need that. You need somebody that's going to be that sometimes. And when you have the right person you're with, you'll be that for each other. We do that. Okay, that's a coin. Do you feel like um, a dream, some dreams can be too big for you? I don't think any dream is too big. I don't think any dream is too big. I don't think so either. You know what I'm saying? But some people will try to discourage you and be like, eh. Man, that's not possible. You know what I'm saying? Because they can't. This is the yeah. thing. Again, your dream should always scare you. Your goal should be so big that it makes people doubt you. That's the whole point of an empire. Nobody has. There hasn't been anyone that has created something that people didn't doubt and was like, I don't understand how you think of the Internet. No. What was, before there was the internet yeah. that just sounded crazy. Oh, you talking? How could? How is that even possible? I took a class how back that, in ninety four. It, it didn't. It, use the internet. it didn't even make <laughs> sense. You get what I'm yeah. saying? And if your dreams don't scare somebody like that, they're not big like that. I mean, they're dreams, but you, what change you're gonna make? And I, I dream like that. Like, oh, that don't, don't make even, sense. I don't even say they they visions. You know what I'm saying? They visions. Dreams, visions. It's like we I think we had this conversation before. You think? Yeah, we were saying something about the difference between dreams or visions, and I end up I looking it up, up or something. I spitting up the same shit over and over again. No, you, know you we was we was talking about there's a difference. I was saying it, it wasn't. You were saying it was, and I think I ended up looking it up and it actually Yeah, was. so basically with your dreams, write it down. Right, it's very important to write your dreams down and then come with a plan like small goals to accomplish them dreams. You know what I'm saying? I think that's a smart way. I think, in, well, I mean, you got to use increments or chunks, yes, you can't swallow right? it whole. Yeah. You got to break so, it down. And any goal, I don't care if it's getting your driver's license, you have to 
break it down to the smaller goals to get the driver's license to get a job. Okay. I'm going to do two applications today. Okay. I'm going to do this. So with any goal, you have to have, uh, like, a a, not a blueprint. What is the word? Like a step-by-step manual or a guide 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 to get you, yeah, to, to the goal or the destination. Um, and that's what I'm saying. He said, you know, she liked to celebrate. I do. I'm telling you, I see myself in she it. Do. I'm I see her. myself it, it there. It frustrates me. Like, damn, <laughs> can we work on the next step? You already celebrating. Like, no, let's get the next step going. Because that's so just, I like to get all the steps out before I get to the finish line. Because I, I'm, I'm the definition of faith. Like, I believe I can accomplish it. I don't like getting my feelings hurt. No, nah, see, my feelings ain't going to get hurt. Because can't no one stop me from... Thinking, seeing, believing, or knowing I could do something. I, the only person that could stop me is me. And so I'm celebrating because I know what's to come. And, and I'm not scared of failure. I don't like how it always feels. I may stay there for like 2.5 seconds, and then I'm back to the drawing board. Um, because I know what it takes to get things done in life. And, and you're going to fail. And I don't even say you're going to fail. You're going to fall off the bike and then you have to get back up. And so he would get so frustrated with me. Like you, but the crazy thing is ask him what he's telling me now, babe, I'm so proud of you. Like I'm so, I say it like that. <laughs> no, but yeah, you say okay, it, then. but you say it because for uh, I'm many just gaslighting you, you gaslighting me. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Like I said, so now I don't he's even like, know how to use that word. <laughs> he, he, because he's seen me, Say I'm gonna do something and do it so she, many times. She's gonna, she gonna hold on to it and, and basically like if I don't somebody let it go. if somebody tell her no, she gonna fucking find every fucking other way to go around <laughs> that shit. And it's like she gonna like say 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 it's a house and every damn window is is, is locked and the people saying no, I'm not letting you in. She's digging a damn hole under the house and Man, come I'm through the bottom. In. It's like she's gonna find a way in. But that's what I love about her. She she don't quit and she don't take no no for no. You I know, don't believe in no. Believe I just believe in, no. in not right now. And every time I say no, she still take it from me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. What are you talking about? But anyway, so we're going to even, I feel like people that don't have dreams or slash hope are very dangerous because they feel like they don't have shit to lose. And those is the most dangerous people to have around you and come across because if somebody don't have nothing to lose, they really don't give a fuck about shit. And that's very sad. What are your thoughts on somebody that don't have no dreams and no hopes? I feel bad for them because every day I wake up with a purpose. I even feel bad for people that don't know their purpose because I feel like that's what keeps me going. Every day I work, wake up with an agenda. Like most people just wake up as a robot. It's, it's routine. I got to do No, I wake up with a purpose. I I wake up with an agenda. It's like, yeah, you have your company, but I wake up with a purpose, a purpose to execute every day, a purpose to get things to, because I know the bigger picture, right? I know what I'm trying to build. I know what I'm trying to do. I know where I want to be. And I think when you have a purpose, it keeps you going. Um, and that's how people, you know, fall into depression because they don't have anything to keep them going. And when you get into a routine, you become unhappy. Because if you're just doing something and you're not doing what you love. A robot. Yeah, it, it, it just becomes like you're existing. And so that's why I'm like, I'm big on purpose. I'm big on following my dreams and, you know, executing my goals. Because every time I set a goal and crush it, I just I just get on, the you know, get my pen and paper out and it's to the next goal. That's what's up. Because you just got to you just got to take a shot, take a shot at it. And a lot of us is afraid to take that shot for our dreams. They want to stay in that safe area. Well, I don't I don't think it's they want to stay in the safe area. I don't think people were taught to dream. And, and it kind of it kind of scares me with the, the new generation. Um, you know shit, that's all they do is dream. No, I don't I don't know. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Like when I was a kid, I had an imagination. And I I would I'm in a store. I'm visualizing myself in a store. You know, I, I'm creating i'm thinking things and not to say they're not creative because this generation is far beyond the most creative generation there probably have has ever been thus far um but what i'm saying is i think being a kid and having like playing with blocks just having imagination it it teaches you to dream 
right? If if I have Barbies and I don't have a Barbie house and I got to make Barbies out of a Some Barbie box. house out of books and yes. you know what I'm saying? It's teaching me how to dream, how to see this book, but it's really a, a, a castle. A, yeah. A, a mansion to my Barbies. You know what I'm saying? And it's like that creativity with going outside and, and just playing different games and it's, it's imagination. And I think sometimes we lose that along the way. And I always want to be like a kid. I think the kids are the most creative people because they can see when nobody else believes in, you know what I'm saying? An adult ain't going to get no books out and be like, Oh, my Barbies is in a mansion. And it, <laughs> you know and what I'm if saying? If he do, you're going to sigh. I don't like, what's wrong with yeah, this fool? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so I think, you know, you should always have that sense of that kid still in you to dream, to create, to imagine, like take risks. Yeah. Like, because a kid is not scared to play on the floor and just be talking to the door and that's about, you know what I'm saying? And adults, we get too far in our head and, and we start thinking about being judged and we lose hope. And this is stupid. A yes. kid, a kid when they're very small, I think they're the most purest because they don't, they don't, they haven't experienced yet. Most of the time judgment. So they speak with, when they say kids are the most honest people because they haven't experienced that yet. You know, the judgment, the doubt, you're stupid. That idea is not good enough. You know what? You don't matter. And so they're still in their purest form where what you say don't matter. They still going to see that Barbie mansion out of them books. And as you get older, you lose that. And it's like, you're afraid to win because you're afraid of the outside noise and criticism. I'm not afraid of the outside noise and criticism. I don't really care what you say because I'm a win whether you quiet or you chattering. That was deep. Y'all better rewind that and listen to that again. That 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 was that was right there because it was it's so true. We afraid of everybody judgment, what they think about us. What and, and the thing is, you worry about somebody else's opinion that's not even doing nothing from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, why did their opinion matter? You having them stop you from reaching for your dream, but this person's not doing nothing. And it's crazy because you saw, it's just, you don't want to be judged. You for you, you lost the kid in you. I don't ever want to yeah. lose the kid in me. I don't ever want to lose the kid in me. I'm not talking about the broken kid, you know, because some of us has broken kids that we haven't healed from. I'm talking about the creative kid, the kid that don't care. That's like, Sania, you can accomplish anything you put your mind to and let's kill it. I'm never going to let that kid die. I will ride in a neighbor. I remember, remember, we was going to talking about moving to Calabasas. I was like, let's drive out there. I got to see the scenery. I got to yeah, feel the I'm vibe. Feel the area. So I took my whole family. They just looking at me. I'm like, no, nah, we about to go feel the vibe. We about, and that's me. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? On. That's the type Hold of on. stuff Hold I do. Hold on, but this is the funny part because we got to the security gate. He was like, nah, nigga, you ain't getting in <laughs> That was a gate. He always got jokes. <laughs> but I wanted I wanted to see oh, the vibe shit. because I also understand to see I'm the type of person aesthetics means a lot to me. Like the way my house looks, the way my office, everything, the way my street looks. Because it the gives way the the energy. House, it, it gives you a certain type yes. of vibe. If everything looks dull, it looks ran down. To me, it just that's depressing. You know what I mean? And it's crazy because every time, well, it's not crazy, but when the clients come into the office, they're like, it really looks nice in here. It's like, yeah, because I want you to feel nice. I feel like if you feel nice, it takes you out of a depressive state. So I want you to feel new. I want you to feel like you got to come here and get dressed. I want you to have that feeling when you step in here. And that when I go home and I look at my house, I remember where there was a time where we lived somewhere and I was like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Cause every so many years I would, I would buy new furniture and update my house. And I said, I'm not, I'm not buying anything until we move. Cause I had it set that we was moving and I hated being there. And, but the, the drive was, I got to get out of here. I got to get out. You know what I'm saying? I got to get out of this place. And it pushed me to want to do more. It pushed me to just be on go time. And that's why even when we go out on vacation, I'm like, the room got to, I got to be in a certain type of hotel. I got to be in a certain type of room. And people be like, you're not going to even see, but it's my mind. It's when I'm on vacation, when I'm gone, you know, somebody asked me like, do you hate coming back? I'm like, nah, my mind is the purest. I went to go basically reset. And I got all these ideas, no distraction, having a good time. My mind is going. So when I come back from vacation, it's go time. And the only way I can get that is if my environment, I have to be in a place where I could create, where everything just looks good to me, where I feel good. And I don't even know why I went on that, but 
Yeah, you just. <laughs> um, yeah, she. <sighs> we gonna pause her and her lecture. Um, please continue. Buy one of her books, a travel agent book. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I forgot what I was you, saying. You, you, you was going. I was, I was <laughs> patiently over here. Just I'm just going to be quiet. I wanted to see how yeah. long she's going to run it up. You know what I'm saying? Like run the no, numbers I was up. thinking about Because you was, you, was, you was basically, you, vacation is free your mind. You know, you get the dream and come back and, and, and utilize your time, downtime and get back on the grind. I mean, I think most people do that. But um, I guess that's the key of calling it vacation. The I don't all even that think shit. it's vacation for me. I think it's reset. Like my mind be going. Like I don't know. My mind never turns off, and that's how I know your thoughts are a part of your dream. Because I'll be thinking, and I'll go to sleep thinking about what you know, dreaming about what I was thinking about. Um, which is not always good because sometimes that just means I'm not completely turning off. And sometimes you need to unplug and completely turn off. Yeah, I completely turn the hell yeah, off. You, you definitely like, do. Click, click. You know what I'm saying? You got to plug me up to the charger to turn me back on. But you know what? On <laughs> another hand, too, just from a different perspective, I just think that's what makes everybody different because I'm very analytical. My mind is always analyzing, um, always like, you know, seeing underlying situations, looking for different perceptions. Um, I'm always analyzing and just seeing things. And so for me, my my brain is like, well, everybody has their asset. That, that's my brain. So how can one get a brain like you? Everybody has a brain, but like not like you yours. It. Well, you, know, and, well, you got that little buff ass brain over there. How can one get one? Like <laughs> everybody has a brain. I just think it, it's it's how you utilize it. I think everybody has different skill sets. Minds just happen. Think, to be, I, it's what you choose the the focus on. A lot of people want to choose on a negative to focus. You know what I'm saying? It, it's about what you want to choose. Choose the. Dwell in, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Dwell on, what do you mean? Yes. Dwell on? Dwell on. What was you about to say? You you choose what, you pick and choose on what you want to think about all day. Well, well, I think sometimes we, I call it lazy thinking. One of my clients said it one day years ago, and I was like, that's a good, that's a good term. I like that. Uh, Is that you just let your mind go. You don't, you have no control over your mind, which we do. We just let our thoughts just run instead of putting them into submission and basically, you know, redirecting them to positive things. We'll just let them run. Instead of saying, no, let me think about this. Or, you know, let me put this energy into that. The next thing you know, your day's over. And you're recycling it all, all over, over again. again. And, and that's how up people with that get same stuck. energy that you had yesterday. And you like. But that's because they lost the little creative kid in them. The creative kid is curious, you know. They touching stuff. They're trying to figure stuff out. Yeah, They're very analytical. Your, yeah, don't bring your creative They're, kid to my I'm house. like the creative kid. Like when I see stuff, I'm like trying to figure it out. I'm analyzing it. I'm like, oh, this is different. I talk to people trying to, you know, analyze their mindset. Like I'm like the creative kid in every setting. Even when I'm quiet, I'm just taking it all in. I could see that. I could, I could actually visualize you doing that. I, I do. I'm, I do yeah. that. I, 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 and I, I'm the creative I, yeah, kid. I see. It makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> makes what do you sense. try to say? Dude? I'm just, just saying it makes sense. So, but uh, that's the no, all I had on dreams. And you know what I'm saying? You could wrap it up if you choose to, unless you want to go on one of your spills again. <laughs> oh, you're trying to be funny. Okay. Mm. No, the, I to just think dreaming. Don't just be a dreamer be an executor. And I think the greatest inventors are the ones that can see things in the future ahead. And no dream is too big. Just break that. No dream is too big. Have that dream, but break it down to smaller goals. No dream is too big. But this is the thing. This is the thing with legacy too, because your dream should outlive you. Your legacy should outlive you. If it stops with you, it starts and stops with you. It's not big enough. A lot of people didn't have big enough dreams. Then I can tell you that. No, I'm serious because think of Walt Disney. If Walt Disney stopped and ended, well, think Disney, about it, if everybody was Walt Disney, that shit it, it wouldn't. But that's the thing. I think everybody has that in them. the The thing is, will you tap into it? I've seen people that's so creative and let the person next door because they said they was ugly. Like, oh, but I don't want to get in front of the camera. Yeah, but you you saying legacy live on, but it, it's that's a whole other podcast because it, it's so much levels to it. Because we could even go back to McDonald's. 
the guy that created McDonald's and how he didn't have the business savvy part and got, got his shit snatched from him. A lot of great creators got their shit stolen from them. Their whole legacy stolen from them. You know what I'm saying? Okay, and that's that because they didn't know a certain part. They, they, but, they, but do you think? But do you think if you build one legacy, you have the capability to build another? Your spirit is crushed. Your spirit because you lost the creative kid inside of you again. That's why I keep saying that we all got it. You know what I'm saying? The question is, are you gonna are you gonna tap into it? So something got stole from you. Something didn't happen the way you wanted it to happen. So, you know, somebody told you, you couldn't. Somebody closed the door where you couldn't. That's life. So if you're just like, oh yeah, my spirit is crushed. That's it. That's life. It's always gonna be situations that does not happen the way you want it to happen. Not happen the way you think you ha- um, think it was supposed to happen. But as long as you tap into that creative kid inside of you, the kid that don't care, the kid that's going to say whatever, the kid that's going to do whatever, that's going to be creative, that's going to be um, observant, that's going to be curious, you can't lose. Yeah, you got to line yourself up with the right people, too. You got to line yourself up with God. Yeah, but on that note, wrap it up then. Until next, no. <laughs> 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 this ain't no dictatorship. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Boy, see, she got control of the, the, the board right now. So I'm I'm on the whole other side, you know what I'm saying? Helpless right now. But um I'll be back on that board real soon. <laughs> I think I like the board. I oh, think I like shit. the board. Honestly, I don't even use the board. You you overuse the board, which is annoying sometimes. No, but um what was your, your greatest dream? I, I wasn't your a, biggest I dream. wasn't a dreamer. That's, and that's what I'm saying. I wasn't, my thing was, it was like basically hustling and making money, trying to make shit happen. I wasn't, I never grew up or even now like a big old dream. Like, oh, I want this this big old house. Oh, I want it. You know what I'm saying? But I have small goals. No. Like when I, I wanted the seven series, I seen somebody rolling with the seven series. I was like, mm, I want that. And I worked to get that. But I wouldn't call it a dream. You know what I'm saying? I never... So grind face is not a dream. It wasn't a dream. No, it wasn't. So what is it now? Shit, it's a business. It's I not a like, dream. I feel like... What was it with Elon Musk when he had the um, the stock and was bamboozling people and getting them to try to invest in it? The dog, it, dog it, coin? I don't remember. And then he was like, basically, it was just some BS. That's how you sounding right now. But I'm going to put, it, I'm I mean, a, I mean, I'm put not, it in perspective. I'm not going to lie to people. Oh, grind face was a, a dream I had. I, I woke up and was like, oh, God I think told you, me. I think you misunderstand. You know what I'm no, I think well, you, this is what I'm taking as a dream. No, something I think big, you something like, I think, wow. I think you know you're what I'm misunderstanding saying? what I'm saying like a goal. And because the conversations that we had when I didn't understand, you're like, no, I'm trying to make it like an entertainment. And it, it hasn't even reached where you're trying to get it to go. So you wouldn't. Like you know what? I'm gonna lie. I'm gonna be, yeah, I'm I'm like, I'm be transparent to you. You know the dream that I always had and always desire to have. Don't say nothing crazy. Is to meet my dad. Exactly, Aww. and it's not possible. So I think that's why I was never a dreamer. You just made it all sad and fuzzy. Why? I'm just saying. So when certain things ain't possible, why dream? You just took it and took the whole train and put it on a whole other track in a whole <laughs> other different direction because I'm asking you about Grindface TV. You have always talked about it. It's a vision. It's not a dream. Okay, well, tell me the difference because... Because I think a dream is something just just out of reach. Mm. Something that you got to work hard to get. Something that's this. You're not, not working hard. It's not easy to accomplish. I, that's what I feel like a dream is. You're not working hard. Yes, but I'm working hard at my goals, at a vision of trying to take something that I already planted to see and, and scoping it to something else. That's that's like a a, a scoper. You know what I'm saying? It's not. So, a, so let me ask you this. So before you saw the goal, you didn't see the vision. Before I saw what goal? Grind face. Cause you, I, yeah, you, and that's what I'm saying. I've seen a vision of what it, it could be, the possibilities of it. But I, I can't say it's a dream. I wouldn't throw it in my categories of dreams. No. Well, well I guess we're all different. Because when I'm working on something, I'm dreaming about it. I'm meditating about it. Yeah, I'm not it. doing like, all I'm that. I'm focused on it. Like, I see myself there. 
yeah, I'm sitting with you and you talking about some nonsense and I'm daydreaming about the end results. Put it so this I guess way, it's that's like, different. I'm working hard to make it build it into an empire, but if it don't become an empire, it's like I'm not I'm not surprised. I'm not I'm not shocked about it. It is what it is. You have no faith. It's not about faith. It's just it's the everyday life of me. I don't know. I guess that's I'm built different. I don't know. Put grind face TV in my hands. I'll make it I'll make it a reality. Because then it's also I see it's just a whole lot more work and watching you and the, the dealing with people. I'm just yeah, I'm not whole, a people the pleaser. I, I'm, is, I don't handle business professionally. I don't you know what I'm saying. So it's like <laughs> it, it's I just see a whole I see a lot of headaches. You know what I'm saying? And headaches. So I, it, it's a it's a it's it's a flip side of being bigger. The bigger you get, the more you know what I'm saying. That's how I look at it. So I'm, I, I'm in the I comfort will, zone in the I cruise think, control. Well, the the thing about building by yourself. You could get there, but it's going to be harder and it's going to take longer. But where's there? Hold on. To the things we talked about. I don't know if you want to say what, you know, your no, vision you know. for face is, but you know what we discussed. But the thing is, dealing with people can be a headache. Like, if I could just do what I want to do and just have to do it by myself, it would be much easier for me. Um, because dealing with a bunch of different, many personalities, it could be frustrating overwhelming and just annoying at times I, i'm it is it just is because you know what you want you know what you're trying to do you know what you're trying to execute and then it's sometimes it's like oh this person don't like this person this person's mad this person this 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 and it's like can we just do what we came here to do can we just be happy because that's the type of energy i like let's just you know create like a family type atmosphere. Cause I think when you get along with people and you like, with pe uh, like people, you work better yes, with them. Yes. You, you're, you want to create, you know what I'm saying? When you are in a place where it's happy and it's fun, you, you want to create. And so I've always tried to create that type of atmosphere with my company and have, haven't been successful yet because I just don't, I've had to come to the, the realization and everybody is individuals and that's my vision but that doesn't mean they're accustomed to working like that. And I don't think society teaches you, you know, you're supposed to be happy and the job is supposed to be fun and laid back. And then, then even when you try to do that, it's twofold because then you got people that's too laid back. Now you're taking advantage of the situation and not really doing what you're supposed to do. You know what I mean? And so I don't know, just dealing. I understand what you're saying because when you deal with multiple people, it could become a headache. But I will say it's 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 not all bad. There's a lot of there's a lot of good sides to it too, you know, because you could bounce ideas off of people. You got creative people that really want to put in the work. You always gonna have your good and bad and everything, right? You gonna have your good people that's willing to work and ready, willing to basically put in the work, and you always gonna have your slackers that you know try to make excuses and slack off any chance they get. And the ones that are trying to get over, I had a few. And of those. yeah, <laughs> and you gonna have the people that try to get over and take advantage and take your kindness for a weekend. You gonna have it all. So you just have to be well balanced, but it does come with it. And that's why I'm saying when people be like, I'm on a business, I'm like, I mean, it looks good. You know, people just it's trendy. I'm a business, but I'm like, it's a whole lot that comes with it and being responsible for people's livelihood, having to figure out ways that you're going to make sure they eat. And you know what I'm saying? Especially when you're a small company, you got to figure out ways to generate. Yeah, I'm looking at her cause like she's going on and on and on oh, again. Okay. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> She, she going on and on and nah, on I'm again. serious. I feel I, I don't you. Think I feel the passion. Think I think all the listeners felt your passion. You know what I'm saying? Isn't he annoying? It, it was like he was talking about me and my company. We done switched lanes and got on her and her company. Like because I'm goodness. saying I can understand. You know, I understand. This when your spouse is trying to take all the shine and shit. Oh like shit, God. let me shine. Can I shine? I'm saying I understand what you're saying, <laughs> but I also understand to take. The company where it needs to go, you're going to have True, to. But, get, but the thing it is, comes, does it need? Does it need to go? That's that's my point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it needs to go because I, I sacrificed too much for it, so it better go. Like shit. So it's put like, it in my hands. I'll make sure it go. Go where, and that's what I'm saying. Go. It, it's like it needs to go. People want to say need. Okay, it needs to go so it could be a bigger audience. But my thing is, if, if I'm making a certain amount of money, I'm cool with it. You know what I'm saying? So why open up to a bigger scale when the payday won't be as bigger scale? So it's all about doing the math and making sure what's what's fine with no, me. No, the, the because if I'm making millions by myself, 
why why go bigger? You know what I'm saying? And it don't make more, but you have dealing with more headaches. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so I, it, the it math got to make sense to me. Want. It just depends on it depends on what you want. So then that means your legacy was starting to end with you. No, my legacy is going to end with my son. He's going to take in whatever and probably end with your son. I mean, wherever he goes, if he have kids, but I'm saying he might take it to the next level. Who knows? Yeah, he's you creative know, so like that. He he. I'm just laying the foundation. Shit. Got it. <laughs> I mean, over here looking, got it, nigga. Then wrap the show up. Because <laughs> uh, I just wasn't expecting you to say that. Because I know wh- what you're trying to do and where you want to take it to. Um, so I don't know. You playing possum? I don't. I don't. You don't want your haters to know what you do. I don't know. Because I'm just looking at you like I don't she even know what you're talking about right now. Yeah, yeah. She lost too. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying somebody, a wise man told me, say he never lay all his cards on the table. Apparently, you really not trying to lay it down for the podcast. No matter, I'm like, this is not what we Even discussed. though they think the game is over, you never let them cards out under your sleeve out. They still get pissed off. So, in conclusion, you know, never lose the 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 creative kid in you. Always dream big, but go harder. You know, dream hard, but make your actions that much bigger and harder so that way you can execute and your dream becomes a reality. And have somebody that supports you. That's very key too. But listen, so now you just now I can't I was, even I was, I was just adding to your clothes up. No, you know I can't even close because Damn, yes, that's you could. not as bad. <laughs> I can't close because you we we expect everybody's lives to be like ours. And you saying just make sure you have somebody to support you. It could you. be a brother, no, it could be a girlfriend, no, it could be a, no, a mama, but no, somebody that's no, okay, no, somebody not no, might not support no, you. What? No, no. Because I'm working in, you know. To the, with the girls in the juvenile hall right now and everybody doesn't have a family. Okay. Everybody doesn't have support. And so what I would say to you is you be your own support. Don't ever, don't ever focus or wait on somebody to support you or be there for you to wait on executing your dream. Because guess what? You may have a family of a million people and somebody still may not support you. You may be by yourself and can't find support. You could be laying up with somebody next to you and they hating on you. You be your own support. You be your biggest cheerleader and your biggest fan to make sure you push yourself to the next level. How about that? Okay. I'll um, I take that. I mean, shit. If you ain't got nobody, I be your own support system. I feel, I feel you. Okay. Let's go. Until next time. Continue to break cycles break break cycles when you hit the button please <laughs>